everybody. I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and I want to ask you something today. Have you ever laid down in the tall grass or tall flowers, just relaxed and looked up and watched clouds float by? That used to be one of my very favorite activities as a child. And one of the great things I love about paintings is that they can become windows to memories, to feelings, to experiences that we've had. And every time we look at them, we can be transported back into that emotional state. This weekend, this wonderful weekend, or whenever you're watching on the replay, I want to share with you how you can create that feeling in your home, in your life, or as a gift with this wonderful upward view acrylic painting. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He is going to be tracking us with one of our four cameras today, or is it three? Many cameras, and that way you can track all the action. Sorry, babe. We got a few in here. Huh? We have a few. We have a few. There are many cameras. There's new cameras. <laughs> Depends so on the day. Basically, he's going to make sure you're up on every step of the process. I'm going to explain it in very clear, simple terms. If you check this description below, you're going to see a link to our website. Our website has materials and it has some extra resources that may help you succeed at this painting a little bit better, including a two-step traceable and a step-by-step -step pinnable graphic. Now, the traceable, the reason it's in two steps is for those of you guys that have a little bit of a challenge being irregular with your clouds, that way you can do the sponging and not worry about the shapes as much. And then it also has the flowers, just in case drawing or freehanding is not yet your friend. If you're close, though, if you're real close, I totally suggest this be your entry painting into, like, giving it a go. It's going to be easy. I definitely qualify this as a one hoot. I am excited to do this cheerful, relaxing, calming piece. And I would like to get started and show you how you can make this at home. All right, so All right. I have an 11 by 14 canvas here. And today, because of some craziness on Facebook, what I'm going to just briefly say is we don't have a lot of wishes. So on the wishes, I'm going to wish that everyone gets a painting they're proud of. And that's all we're going to do today. I'm just going to wish that for you. That today, when you paint your painting, you get a result that you're super, super proud of. I'm going to mist this canvas board lightly. Now, when, when you say mist it lightly. No, I mean like super lightly, like no drips, just a very, like dew in the morning. Mm. Like desert dew. So it's just like. Whoo, Here's the deal what I found. Dew. Somebody had said their canvases were warping and I did some tests and I found that some of the economy canvases will as they dry if you miss them and if you do it at all like you get too much water will bend a little bit so that's a thing if you bought an economy canvas that you may run into that you might not expect to have happen shrinkage um, i am for the purposes of the show going to get my biggest brush because i want to be able to go a little bit quickly i'm going to get my number 30 bright damp and drag off the extra water i'm just saying grab your bigger square brush if you're brand, brand new to painting, you're like, I don't have that brush. Don't worry about that. This is my big baby. But what you're going to want to look for in your paint kit is your biggest square-shaped brush. If you have one that says bright, that's the best one. But if you have one that says flat, don't worry about it. Because we're just painting a little bit of white on the canvas. Mm. Just painting a little bit of white on the canvas. The reason I'm doing this for this painting is not that all canvases are going to need to be painted white or that you need to prep your canvas, but because I'm getting a very light sky blue, and I know that many of you have extreme color shift at home, and when I say color shift, what I mean is that your paint darkens as it dries, and this will help you not have that experience. I'm going to get a little of the blue on my big, big brush. I'm a big, big brush. It's fun to say big, big brush. And I'm going to get it into the white, and I'm going to make a sky blue. And I want you to think to your childhood, think to your happy memory of laying down in the ground. What sky color was that? Look for it on your palette. And when you see it, and this is going to be real fun, because we're going to do a curved brush, brush stroke like this, guys. I'm going to come from my right corner, and I'm going to curve 
to my left. Can you guys see how I'm doing that? This begins to lay the effect of almost a fisheye lens or the curvature that we can feel sometimes when we lay down and look up into the heavens above us. And imagine, oh, I got some dirt on my canvas. I'm going to go like that. I was erasing <laughs> yesterday on my easel. Oh, I see. So my little erasers were getting a, becoming preserved into the paint. It won't hurt my painting. It's just messy. <laughs> I don't want it. If you get a cat hair or dog hair in there and you can't get it out, don't panic. It's not going to hurt your painting. And then later, maybe if someone finds your painting, they'll go, this woman owned a cat or a dog. <laughs> I, I heard there were some insects trapped in uh, some master's paintings. That's right, Van Gogh. Yeah. Van Gogh had a cricket uh, trapped in a painting. I get where he was at. He's probably just like, I'm not going to walk over there and get this cricket out. End of you, cricket. I'm painting. Was it Starry <laughs> Night that it was stuck in? No, I don't think it was Starry Night, but I'll have to look that up. It was, it was one of his more famous ones. Really? Yeah. As, as I recall. I mean, like, well, I know that for sure there was one in there because I remember. Uh, I, well, you know, that just broke actually really recently. And uh, I was going to check that out and see, really cool. find out the fall. I was going to follow up on that because I thought that was so interesting. Can you guys see how I've just curved my stroke? Oh, yeah. And how that's made this sort of uneven. Yeah, it's really cool. It definitely shows the curvature of the sky. That's right. Uh, if any of you ever watched uh, the, the Jim Henson Studio project where they had the, like, there was this entry song. I don't remember what the show was, but the song used to make me and my mother just tear up. It was like the curve of the world. Oh, 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 oh. That was the, um, it had like a kangaroo. Yeah. They yeah, were, and um, some tree they, creatures. And yeah. They all lived, I don't know. It was very happy. Planet. It was awesome. I watched it with the baby, but I think maybe I was really watching it for me. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> it's like, this is a very calm show. <sighs> oh, sorry if that was startling. Um. I think you know. Oh, it's I'm good just to putting do that. my week down, my work yeah. week down, and I'm just letting it go. I hope you're letting it go in your studio and just remembering this is our downtime and our relax time. Do you have a curve? Yeah. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Good. You know, I remember hearing that making that <sighs> sound is actually really good for us, like psychologically. Like, it's our brain hearing our body say it's okay to relax. It's okay to relax. We need to relax. <sighs> yeah, I, I always do. A little relaxing is, is good. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Now, I'm going to do a, a little bit of light brushing. Yeah. I'm going to take, um, hmm, I'll just grab this. I randomly grab brushes all the time. <laughs> this is a number 10 bright. You can kind of see the width of it in relationship to my hands. It's another square. You know, get a square brush about this size. Um, or if you have a round, just, just in the, not the biggest one you have, but the next to biggest. I wouldn't go any bigger than this. <laughs> but just this here. This is a bright number 10 by uh, Silver Brush. This is a ruby satin. I'm going to just, notice I didn't get my brush in the water here. And I'm coming, I'm sneaking into the edge of my paint. And I'm tapping into my palette. Tap, tap. This is actually quite fun. Tap, 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 tap. I feel like I'm doing something important when I do this. And when I have this dusting where you can see the hairs, I'm going to do this little dry brush effect for the high, high clouds. And I'm going to be just pressing. If you can see that on my finger, I'm not going to push the bristles. I'm not going to go deep like that. No, no. I'm going to go soft like this. And it's very dry. And I'm going to follow the curve. And I'm going to just make... I need a little more paint. I wiped it all off on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> tap, 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 tap. Here I come. I'm going to just maybe come on the edge now, on the edge of my brush. Do you see how I'm doing on the edge? Oh, yeah. I'm going to just do these little up high clouds. I don't want to get too painty, though. It's real easy to get too painty here. I'm just stroking back. What am I doing? I'm making this little distant. Now I'm on this corner right here. Corner, corner, just implying this sort of strata here. You don't want to make even lines like that, right? And if you do, go ahead and soften them with the brush like this. See how I've done? Mm-hmm. 
If you made even lines, soften them. This is a subtle, far away thing that you're going to want. And I'm going to just make sure that it's there. My little strata. Come on the corner, soften it. Oh, I love doing soft, far away clouds. And the secret of this is a light amount of paint. Right? Soft hand, gentle hand. This can be very hard if you have trouble with your pressure. Um, a lot of different reasons why that can happen if you have uh, anything going on where you've got shaking or muscle control. Or if you have a situation where um, you have difficulty feeling pressure. And there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. So this is a great place to practice that. But you know where you need to have the lightest pressure of all? Is on your expectations of yourself when you're doing that breast stroke. Mm, yeah. Just a fun exercise to see, can I lightly, lightly, lightly paint my canvas? Good for you. Good for the canvas. You used to call that light cat pressure. I did used to call that light cat pressure. And, and then I had, well, if the cat was wet. If white, yeah, that's right. Well, it just, it wanna... started out if you have a sunburn, because I'm a redhead and I had a lot of sunburns. How, how lightly would you want lotion put on your skin? And then a lot of people mentioned that they had not experienced a sunburn. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's a whole planet. Differences. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so some people haven't had a sunburn, and I will try to send them light and love <laughs> for their luck. And then we started talking about uh, wet cats. Like, how lightly would you pet a cat that had just been bathed? Very, very lightly. So if you've been here for a while, you've always think like cat pressure. <laughs> now, for this next part, it's nice to have the canvas be just a little bit dry. You wouldn't want it wet. You don't want the paint lifting up. And we're going to sponge it. And here's the little trick. I'm going to be using sea sponges. You can find these at the dollar store. You can find these at the craft store. You should not pay a lot of money for them. If you really, really can't find them, just a regular kitchen sponge can totally do this. And, of course, you can brush this technique on just as easily. I'm going to grab, these are, sea sponges come in a, a, a rough, medium, and uh, not big texture. So, like, these are like some rough textures. This is just a mild texture. I'm actually going to use this little guy here. I call them my chicken nuggets. Sea sponges that look like chicken nuggets. I've seen these in Walmart in the decorative section. They're just everywhere. And they can, you should spend about just a couple bucks on these. Now I'm going to take a little of my uh, black and white. And because I don't want to have uh, these weird spots of unexpected color on my sponge, I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to pull out a little of my black and a lot of my white. And I'm going to make my sky cloud gray. Make those sky, gray skies go away? Yeah. See how I'm making this nice, smooth, incorporated? Can, can I so, zoom you? Can I yes, zoom on you? Yes, you can. I'm gonna you can zoom, zoom me. I love make, using this with a knife. You can do this with a loyalty card. You know how sometimes they give you uh, loyalty cards to businesses <laughs> that you're no longer loyal to, loyal to and you have to clean out your wallet? Next time you're cleaning out your wallet, you could uh, do some makeshift uh, art tools. I zoomed you. Business cards will work in a pinch. But the idea is that you're incorporating the paint thoroughly so that this gray paint doesn't have any bright spots of black or white. And I like to mix it out ahead because that lets me work pretty quickly and not have any kind of problem. Now, first, I'm going to put in my white. And I'm going to get just my little white. And it's okay if you get a smidge of blue into it. right? But you mostly want this to feel like white paint. And you want it to be fairly loaded on your, on your little sponge here. See how my sponge is very painted? There it is. It's all nuggeted up. Now, on this side, my clouds are going to be shorter. They're going to be longer coming here. And I'm going to rotate my canvas to get a good result. Rotate away. So I'm going to just tap in. Look, that's what it does. And just tap in a little happy cloud shape. And I like to move my hand, if you're noticing. And I go, clack, 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 cloud. And I let it do what it's doing. Let it do what it wants to do. Let that cloud be. Let that cloud be. Set it free. That's right. Set your little clouds free. But I do want one that's coming out more into 
the focus of where I would be laying down looking up. Think about a cloud that you would be delighted to see. So we're just kind of doing these wonderful little angles. And just pop out this way. Pop out this way. Oh, that's fun. Can anyone tell I'm self-soothing myself today? <laughs> I'm having fun. I'm going to bring this down here and making a nice deep indent like you do. Indent. Indent. But I'm going to come around and be like, oh, this little bent over this way and just tap it back. I'll hold this up so you can kind of see me get into the edge there. If it gets watery like this, it'll make bubbles. So I'm going to come get a little more paint. Now, how and make wet sure it does it. And the other thing that you can do to get rid of those little bubbles is that it's just that my, my sponge was a little bit wet. Okay. So how wet should it be? Just hardly damp. Hardly. Just enough moisture in it. See how it's squeezing? It's too no, much. So what I can do is if I have too much, I can get it into my towel and squeeze it out. You don't want it to um, be able to drip or pool. You just want it to not be stiff. Don't be a stiff sponge, man. Be a soft be sponge. A soft and compliant sponge. I love how I let these little edges become... You know, stuff. So you can also like cover big areas by doing these little swirls. That's how you get the soft blend with the sponge. We paint with sponges a lot. Um, and it's not because uh, I've been asked a lot about is this because, you know, decorative painting. And though I agree that decorative painters use a lot of sponges, so do fine artists. <laughs> so do all kinds of creative beings because these are a good mark making tool. I'm going to turn my easel because i turn my easel not myself you know i know some guys who paint cars and motorcycles and all sorts of things with airbrushes that also use sponges sponges are good they're generally a useful tool you know i'm just gonna make sure that there's a nice little cloud popping up here as i go they're good tools that's right that's a good way of looking at them they're just a good happy little tool sometimes i like to get a little blue in there but if you do that you got to watch that you don't get the high yeah i'm rubbing it out yeah. The, the deep pigment. <laughs> deep it will, pigment. It will mess with your result. I'm just making this nice big cloud. These are going to be like the, the bright highlights of my cloud. If you've really struggled with clouds, sometimes sponging like this allows you to have really big breakthroughs. Mm, yeah. I've seen that. You know, not everybody, but so, there's a percentage of people go, oh, I get it when they sponge it. Can can I observationally from I'm gonna like just Chad, softly blend this in hmm? from just from observationally from Chad? Yeah, it, it, I think that people have more luck with natural sea sponges because they have the the weird edges. I've it is much easier. I can do this cloud with a kitchen sponge. I can actually probably do this cloud with a bath scrunchie, crumpled up newspaper. I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna do this cloud because I understand the fundamentals of my cloud. Right. But if you're really new to painting and, and it's, you don't have all that knowledge just sort of in you yet, and you will, but maybe not today, um, yeah, I would say that natural sponges are your friend. Mm -hmm. And we did check into it, and we're not uh, harming the ecology Yeah, it, it looks by like recommending them. <laughs> we were worried when we first suggested it, so we looked it up. Yeah, it's like uh, they don't actually destroy the plant. They just cut the top of it off, and it regrows. So it's, apparently it's like actually kind of good for the sponge and... Yeah, it's like... Or that's what they're telling us. At least that's, yeah, they're telling us, and it's like people <laughs> actually go down and harvest it, and they do it in a pretty good kind of way where they get paid cash for the work, and it's like, you know, it's like a trade that's supportable. So we thought that was kind of like, at least yeah. on our first research, ethical. If, if, if we learn something different, you know, we'll if we you. ever find out something like we thought was true, but it turns out it was wrong, we will tell you. We won't, like, hide that. <laughs> We're all super disclaimer -y. We do. We just, <clears throat> we, we take it seriously. We do. Well, I understand that everything I say impacts you. So if yeah, ever I was wrong about something, I don't mind. A lot of times the people who ask me about my, my feelings on silicone oil, I'm like, look, if, if the ASTM comes back and their finding says it's fine, I will make the biggest video push you've ever seen me make. <laughs> These clouds over here, they're a little bit, you know, uh, they're going to be lower. We're going to come Which along one? and just, you know, we're just making these maybe a little bit lower. They're a little more muted and 
I'm sorry. Which white are you using? I'm using titanium white. Titanium and white. And phthalo blue. Phthalo okay. became blue. Did I not say that? Well, I wasn't sure if it was zinc or titanium. I couldn't ah, remember if you said zinc. I'm so sorry. If I no, didn't okay. say that, I usually do right at the beginning. But I do always include the full list of materials in the description. You may not see them because they're hidden below the what the digital people like to call the fold. Mm. And... Wow. Uh, <laughs> now, you've got some really interesting layers that have happened there. Mm -hmm. and, and as we like, so when I'm up here looking at it, these look like just you know, bits of smudgy, smudgy bit. But back here... It looks like clouds. Yeah, that really, that really did some magic. It really does, doesn't it? I'm going to make a nice little guy here. It's important to leave some blue and you want to leave these. Uh, these are called negative space when you hear artists talk about this. The area where the clouds are not, that's my negative space. That's where I don't have a particular subject or object inside of it. And sometimes the spaces between important objects can become negative space. What I'll say is it's nice to leave interesting shapes in your negative space and in your subject. But if you're really new to painting, you might be just sitting here going, I just got to make this sponge dip go. Sure, but I can't be worrying about these design elements at this moment. <laughs> But see how I just use this sponge and I move it and I, you know, I'm pushing in and I'm just going around. I go back. Oh, let's dodge. Oh, we can come out here. And it's just fun to see where the cloud will take you. Isn't it? It really is. And then we're going to just smear that out here. I have done this with tissue and uh, paper towels. and <laughs> I'm telling you, when there's a will, there's a way. Once yeah. I've got those in, I want to create kind of some of the shadowing that can happen in my clouds. And so I'm going to get a little bit of this gray now. Right? And I might grab a smidge of my blue and make sure that that's worked in there. But what do I not want? That high point of color, right? And because I have been out here for a while, my sponge is drying. I'm going to take oh, advantage of uh, my mister. Where is it? There it goes. I'm just going to take advantage of my mister. But even three mists may be too much, so make sure that you don't have too much in there because that can uh, overwhelm you really, really quick, you know? Yeah. And it's those weird little overwhelming moments that can kind of maybe create some problems. I'm going to just tap in a few little shadows because the sun is overhead, right? And what would happen? Get a little more of my way into this. What? Ian, he he just joined us in chat, and he said uh, he loves the way that you're painting today. Yeah? Because, you know, this viewpoint is very uh, near and dear to him because he feels like he falls down a lot. Oh! <laughs> so. So one of the things that can happen when you're sponging is you get, like, uh, unexpected edge, and if you have something you want to soften, you just come and move your sponge to the other side. Look at that. And then you can soften it. We're just doing these right, you know, kind of at this back edge where there might be like a darker, you know, cloud happening or the cloud would be more in shadow. It just helps us layer. I'm not going to take out too much of my refined work, oh, right? I don't want to take that away. You were hiding behind the picture in picture. No, I'm not. I might get a little more blue. I I'll use my palette knife again. Up. I'm going to get just a scotch of my blue into this gray. I love to show you guys different ways to paint clouds. Ah, there it is. Fully incorporated. Oh. Eight. All right. That's fully incorporated, right? Fully incorporated. Oop. Oop. There we go. There we go. Just a little bit of that here and there. Because, you know, your clouds have shadows, don't they? You can just do it with the blue and white. I'm going to come on the other side of my sponge and I'm going to very softly make sure that my edges are e like easy and mellow. Get a little more white into my sponge. Like there we go. That's what I wanted is I wanted a little more white, didn't I? Yeah. So I still have some values and some shadow, but it's lighter and it's 
blending in. And notice I'm not taking out even all of the blue peeking through. And I am leaving what? Some of these whiter edges. Because the clouds will kind of have a highlight around them. Oh, yeah. Them, won't they? Get a little more of this on here. And I'll come around here. And again, you can do that same kind of swirling or you can tap out. It's the same thing. Clouds have shadows. Clouds have shadows. We all have a little shadow. All right, just a little bit, not too much. A little bit of this depth. There we go. A little more of the white in there. I don't want to get, I want to keep those edges of my clouds white. Oh, that's good. Almost done. How are we doing? Let's back up and see how it looks. Oh, I think we lost a lot of our highlight. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm going to do something. What are you going to do? I don't know. Panic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to just put these in. All right? Let me uh -huh. get them in. This happens all the time. This happens to me. This happens to everybody where you're like, oh, that, that's going a direction and it's different than where I intended to go. So I'm going to rinse out my sponge a little bit and I'm going to turn this moment into the best thing ever. What's that? So in our, pretty cool. if something goes a direction where I'm like, hmm, I don't know. I love that. What I do is I step back. I evaluate. I take a deep breath. You break out gesso? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, just if I'm low on canvases. But I mean, that's been known to happen. I'm going to load up with just my white. And I'm going to very softly go back over. I've got my white here. And I'm going to just make sure that those wonderful, fluffy little clouds don't get so dark that I'm not enjoying their presence anymore. And what will probably happen, what I predict will happen, is this will create some just stunning just stunning effects. I plan to do a really interesting cloud class real soon and we're going to do just the simple just the blue and white sometimes so if you enjoyed that and you wanted to go more into that we're going to do that. Let's see how I'm just getting that knocked back and now it's just a nice little Cloud bank where it has become what I wanted. Sometimes, you know, like I'll even go so far as to like start over in a project, but I felt like this one is like, oh, it's real easy to get it back because you can see as I'm putting that white back in, they're just getting cloudy. I see. And I like to on the show, like show you how I would come back into something and get it where I want it to be. Because that's the point, right? Yeah. How do you get your painting? Now you can see I'm pressing down harder. I'm not taking out all of what I have. I'm just simply making it more interesting. Look, I just go over here, I'm just tapping around. How are we feeling, guys? How are your clouds? I love this. You have nice fluffy little clouds yeah, up in the sky, just, sky, sky? They really, really do. They just fluffed right up. Yes, they did. They mine did, but I need to know how we're doing at home. Who's painting along? I, Tell me I, how you're doing, guys. Oh no, I I think that, I think there are lots of people who are clouding along with us because Kim Zim was just was just commenting that gray is just part of that cloud journey. There's it layers is. of the cloud. You gotta have a little bit of shadow, you gotta have I'm, a little bit of shape, you gotta have a little bit of stuff to your cloud. I mean, okay, so you're okay. I just I just wanna make sure I you're still within viewable range. I didn't know if I need to come readjust camera. Oh, for which thing? Oh, no, we're okay. I, you're, I was just checking your palette. Oh, okay. All right. 
So we have a nice little background to be looking up into. We've got some beautiful little clouds peeking out. We've got sometimes on my monitor, if you see me adjusting, actually, I've got to step back for my own thing. I can't actually see it yeah. on the, the monitor you know? is, is sometimes really challenging it's for glare. me to see. Yeah, she, I, I don't have a hood for it. So she can't see it without the glare. So it Now I'm going to come here at this edge with just my white. You guys ready? Yep. Just your white. And I'm doing little circles at just the edge, just my white. I'm going to come here. I'm going to do just my white. There we go. There we go. Just a little bit here and there. Just where you're really going to see them at these edges, you want to just put some of these. You see right there? I'm just adding a little white highlight right there. Is that helping you guys at home? Oh, yeah. Oh, that could use some right there. I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to just put just, just look at the little circles that just help me. I talk about my little clouds and put some bright white there, and I'm going to just, there we go. And a little more white. It does go through a lot of your white. But I do like it. Oh, there. Here. Oh, look at that one. I like that right there. So that is, I went circle, circle, came out a little bit. Circle, circle, came out. Oh, let's add a little bit of that as a little friend, making a little layer. See the little layer? Uh, I may have gotten lost in my clouds, guys. It happens. Sometimes I get so excited about the cloud. Just get lost in it. Help us all if I find any animals in them. Because oh. <laughs> then that's the class. And this is how you paint animals in the clouds. <laughs> there we go. Getting those clouds thought out and considerate and well, well done with bright whites and lots of values, right? Little sponge. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Now, it's a good idea to get your sponges rinsed out from the acrylic paint because they don't clean up easily even with uh, alcohol, rubbing alcohol. So it's important that you, um, you have that. Now, let's get out our colors for the poppies. It's real interesting with the poppies. Let me come over and adjust camera again. Okay. I've got to make sure that I've got this flipped the right way, and this is my right way. The right way I'm doing this is that... Ah, okay. Excellent. So the colors I put out are quinacridone magenta, cad red medium. You could use cad light if you had it. Uh, cadmium yellow and titanium white. If you're painting with other colors, what I would say is you want a cool red. That means it looks a little more bluish, a little more towards purple. And you want a warm red. It looks a little more towards orange. If you can see the difference between those, you need a nice yellow. And this yellow is actually a little bit to the orange. You'd only notice that if you had a cool one there. And then I've got my titanium white. So what, if you're painting craft paint, whatever you're painting, just remember you make the orangey one, the purpley one, and a bright yellow. That's all you got to do. You're going to grab a small bright. I'm going to say, let's do a number six bright. All I'm saying is a brush about that width. And I'm very carefully going to go around and with just my quinacridone and my cad red, I'm going to begin laying in some basic poppies. I like to mix them together. And first, I'm going to make little tiny distant poppies before I do my focuses. So let's say right here I got a little a little poppy there. And you can see how I'm on just the corner of my brush and I go stroke and I'm making these little weird shapes, aren't I? A weird little shape. And you think, how's that a poppy? But you know what? To your mind, later it will be. Um, I like to also on one corner of my brush get some yellow. And you'll see why in a second. This is sort of a fun trick. It's almost a double load. I'm going to come along and I'm going to make sure that I've got a little more, when Poppy's a little more yellow. See that? Oh, yeah. And that way I'm not having to go back and forth too much. Let's go here. I've got 
a little bit of yellow on one side and just the quinacridone magenta on the other. Mm. Maybe as I'm coming along, I'm going to, I like to hold this at the corner. I'm going to make a little more thought out one right here, coming over to the magenta side, just flipping my brush. You see how it's almost fan shaped? Little touch, this little petal right here, and then that dark petal. These are little far away ones. Pull in, I'm pulling in the stroke, it's wide on the outside, pulling towards a point on the inside. Let's make this one a little different, a little smaller. We'll switch over to the magenta. Oh, it's so fun. So when I'm reloading, I will actually just get right back into my CAD red in my magenta. And then I just pull a little of this yellow on the corner of my brush for when I need it. Isn't that kind of a cool trick? Sometimes when I'm painting, I'm like, how am I going to get through <laughs> all this stuff I got going on? And that's how I kind of do it. Let's make a little sort of yellow, and I'm going to add a little of the red right here. That's real far away. When things are small, I'm trying to say that they are they're farther away. And now I'm going to make one that's more open, pulling in that leaf of red. See that leaf pull? That's fun. Maybe I'll pull something right here. So the stroke is I go like this. I plant and I pull, plant and I pull, and then I do this on the white. It's almost like calligraphy, isn't it? That's actually, weirdly, the bottom of my poppy, though it doesn't know it yet. I'll load back up quinacridone and cad red. We'll just do some, some ones like this right here. Distant little guy. Some of these end up behind grass, so... Remember, this is often about just making sure that you're making the distant ones to help the big focus ones. Oh. There we go. Now, I only have a few over here. So first, I'm going to pull that stroke. Okay, I'm curving that. Pull that down. Pressing that out. Aren't these unusual shapes? Don't get stressed out. I'm going to get a little yellow on here for the next one because you've got an unusual shape. I'm going to do one here. See that? Now, I've got the yellow on this side. If I flip over to the other side, there'll be less yellow, and I'm just pulling that down. Flip back over to the yellow, and I can pull that out. And come back and be like, hey, the big leaf. And then pull that one there. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Get a little more yellow. So there's a little friend coming way out here. Those two little strokes. I've got the red on this side, but I'll make sure I'm real loaded with the red. I'm just making this rough shape of my poppy. Little friend sticking up up high. Let's go down low. Make a bigger one. I did a bunch of tests of these, and it was really wonderful. Once you get this technique down, you can make whole series of these, and they're so much fun. See how those just become little floating flowers in the sky? I'm like, wow, that's just all I want to do is just relax and float away. Just a little all red one there. We have one like this. I'm going to come around the corner and make some little poppy friends. Get a little yellow and maybe. I can always go back and add a little of that yellow to other petals. I'm turning, loading up, get my CAD, get my quinacridone, and here's how you work it through the bristles. I pull a little out, I pull a little out, I go push, 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 push. Got some fun ones here. Let's be fun. All right. So this, we're going to go, we're going to pull, press in on the corner of the brush and pull curve a little stroke. Let's look at those little commas. 
And then I'm going to press in, corner of the brush, I'm going to pull down. And then if I need to go to the wide to improve the stroke, I will. I'm narrating everything because if you're really new, you might not see all the weird ways that we artists move our brush. So I'm on the corner pulling in. And then I'm going to come to this opposite corner and stroke out that way and then define it back in. See, I just get that nice shape. I'm making a nice big focus. Now, I want this one to have a little interest, so I'm going to get a little yellow. And come right here to this edge. Pull that in. Maybe a little bit here, too. That implies that there's some light going through my poppy, and I really like that. Hopefully, you like that, too. That's looking really good. Every once in a while, it's a good idea to rinse out your brush because the acrylic paint begins to dry in the bristles if you do long extended work sections like we're doing. So reloading with the quinacridone and the cad red medium. If you have more of the quinacridone, those petals will seem darker and cooler. And if you have more of the cad, they'll seem brighter. Make a little poppy down here. And maybe maybe a little mark there. See little little pops of color always a good idea. Because we're creating atmosphere perspective. Here I am pressing and curling a little brush stroke there. Grab a little red, I mean yellow, pull a little of that in. Only a couple places. Notice I don't put it everywhere. A little more of this. Maybe on this one, get a little more just CAD. This is always powerful. You just go CAD. Make a little one here. These little marks that hide in the grass, they help build the believability of what we've got going on. Now I'm going to get this work through my brush, but I'm going to grab a nice bead of yellow. Let's put one right here, maybe. Switching over to my red side, pulling that down. Making a nice big petal. I'm going to go get my quinacridone. Watch this. Make those little petals that just sort of stick out, don't we? Make a big one that's focal right here. And at first, I'm going to go with this one just in more of the cad magenta mix. And I'm going to make a nice big sort of defined petal. Coming right here. Make another little defined petal that curves in. I'm going to dip in my water. Work that through the brush. And I'm going to try to make sure I got this unevenness. Now this one is interesting. It's going to be a little bit shorter than the others. We're doing some perspective craziness here. And I'm going to come here and also pull a little more of that. Now once I have that in, I'm going to get my yellow. Look at the edges here. Just pull that in somewhat. This one is really in the light, which is why we've done that. Is that nice how that all goes together? You need to darken the base of it. You just come back with your quin. Make sure you've got that wonderful little shape. Coming along. Now, we've got to tuck a big boy. Maybe right here. Maybe right here. Pulling those strokes in. Are you guys doing okay? Really good. Okay, here we go. We're pulling in. There's a little curve to what I'm doing, isn't there? Yeah. Pulling in, pulling in. There we go. Another little one of this. Ah, oh, looking up. See, these are bigger. So by making this bigger, this was a bead of just cat I grabbed right there. What am I doing? I'm, I'm telling a story of a poppy that is. You know, closer to us, maybe right near our face, taking up the view. We're just shaping in its little petals. And then when I've got that, I can always get the yellow and come to the edge here and pull that in while it's still wet. Simple, simple way to paint a little poppy on a sunny day.
Just come along. Just come along. Woo, woo, woo. There we go. Going, going, going. Little pop, maybe again. And if you need to get your yellow, you grab your yellow and you go, no, have a little bit of a. Ah, I love that one. Yep. This will be playful. We're going to take a little color right off the canvas right here. On to make those little marks. Get a yellow. Just pull that right there. Maybe pull one little flower off. We could always put one way out here and it could be kind of like floating maybe this way. So I'm going to kind of try to bend the head where it's going to face that way. I'm using the corner of my brush and I'm just pulling in the curve of my stroke kind of makes these little petals. And by rounding this backside, then I can bring a stem out. It's going to be real nice. Come along this little edge here, pull down. Pull down on that little edge. Maybe pull down into this one too. There we go. But I'm going to leave that one very red. Rinse out really well. How you guys doing? Very good. Not fun. Got flowers floating in the sky. Oh. They look really good. Um, that's not coming out. There it goes. Oh. My blue is so much darker in the, the reference. It's this so is weird. Really nice. Sorry, I'm not trying to step on you. We just big yeah. crowd of people hanging out. It's really nice. How are you guys doing? Hug yourselves. Be like, <sighs> I did okay. Now I'm gonna put out a little of my brown. And my green. I'm going to grab, I think, a round brush. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. I'm going to pull out my black. And you can see I'm sort of thinning it with my water where I dip in the water and I swirl around. That's how I thin my heavy body paint. If you're painting heavy body paint and you need it to have like a lot of flow off your brush, right? Then you've got to thin it a little bit sometimes to get that. And I'm going to get a little of my brown into that. This is a weird, shocking little thing that I'm going to do. More of that. And what you see me doing here is rolling it out of my brush. Now I'm going to come and on the tip, load up. See how that's all on the tip? And on my finger. <laughs> I'm going to come to the back of this poppy right here. Whoops, there you go. Overshot mm. that. I'm going to make a nice little dark dot. I'll make a little one down here. It'll be up a little bit. Not every poppy will have the dark dot, but some will. Good. When I have a little grip of them, I'm going to bend stems here and there and everywhere. Coming down, look how I bent that one there. Let's turn our, turn our little canvas. Let's load up our little. I think I might. Am I missing a big one here? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. Doesn't really matter. Every patch of grass grows its own way. I'm going to load right up here and I'm going to. Definitely put one there. And even though these are distant, we definitely want to show them. But not everyone. Come right here. A little dark mark. And if it's not flowing off, I dip in water and I go swirl, swirl, swirl so that it flows right off. This is a number four round. It's synthetic. Now, I might not see the dark spot on this one, right? And see how I kind of swirled that stem? That's really being very, like, I'm just a, I'm just a regular plant, man. <laughs> I'm going to come here and give this a dark one. And 
Take that curve. Look at that curve. These little guys need some stems. If they get over thick, we're coming back with these highlights. I'm going to put that one right in the middle there. And this one is going to come right off and then curve around. Can you guys see that curve? Yes. That's really fun. I like them. This is the twirling canvas <laughs> of twirl. Twirl. Poppies have often very bent stems, and so it's really fun to make sure that you can talk about that maybe a little bit in your painting about this relaxing day. I like these uh, big perspective paintings. They make me happy. They make me think about vacation and getting away. Yeah, I'm just mixing that paint in with the water. Okay, we've got an interesting one here. We've got an interesting one here. So let's, I think I'm going to turn right here. Really show that little stem. I'm going to bend it right off. Whoa. Each of these little stem directions, if you'll notice that I don't, go always the same way. That just helps me know All right, got some stuff, got some stuff. So when we have those in, we rinse out. The seed pods I thought were really interesting and a titch challenging. And the next color I'm going to get is my green and my yellow. I'm going to mix them together a little bit. Roll out. Do the same thing that I really did with the black and the brown, right? And I'm going to come and just go back over my stems a little bit with this green. I'm not going to paint out all my brown, right? I'm just going to add this little hint of green. Look right here. I'm just, I'm on the tip of the brush. I'm not trying to paint out what I did. You know, a little more yellow in there. You can always get some white into it if you really want it to show, if it's having trouble showing for you. Coming along. Yeah. Just adding these little bits of green. The dark stem and the green contrasting really makes it feel like it's got like shadows and highlights, doesn't it? They're really cool. Next they kind of they need highlight. Just a nice little highlight that you're putting out there. You're not taking out the brown, and it's kind of nice that the green is a little transparent. Yeah. Against that dark color. This is a fun one. There we go. We have all those in. I'm going to put a little of my green. I'm going to get some water into it so it's flowing, right? Now, sometimes I find that the green can have some coverage problems. So I can even put a smidge of blue or a smidge of brown into it. And this is the first part of that. This is real fun. There's these seed pods. Point them downward. That you're going to want to put a couple places. See how I'm just doing the stroke? It's like a little pointed little round football shape. Make a bunch of little weird football shapes. Some of them should be small. They're seed pod shaped. That's right. They're seed pod shaped. Don't make all of them big. You got to change them up. Put them everywhere. We don't that makes some no. small. But some bigger. 
You know, if you're having it, trouble at the end there, you can always come with your brush and shape it. I'll put a little one down in that corner. See how I'm just randomizing these? We'll do another one of this style for fall, like where we have the leaves flowing over us. That could be fun in grass, couldn't it? Dry wheat grass with fall leaves, if you guys want. Could do night sky ones. I love this perspective. I love it too. My last little turn. There we go. Maybe some small ones here. I feel good about that. Now I'm going to get into my yellow. I'll get my uh, brush a little wet. I've gotten into my yellow. I might even get into my white a bit. It's got good coverage. And I'm going to go ahead and take the top of my seed pods and I'm going to make little stems that just come down. So I come and I highlight the top and I make a little stem. I might highlight and then go the opposite direction, right? I've got a crazy unexpected direction because plants might do that to me, huh? I like the top. I come around and bend down. I like the top. Come around and bend down. Making that journey. If I need to connect a couple stems, I'm going to have so much grass over this that it becomes this like, you know, how do I want to do it kind of thing. I'm going to dip in water, make sure that the flow is good off my paint. Use the tip of my brush. You can use any detail brush that you have. Whatever gives you a nice fine line. You could use paint pens. Dip in water. Reload. Oh yeah, I made that one go to an unexpected place, but I'm going to curve this one back the opposite way. We're almost done with our seed pods, and then it's just our grass, and we're done. And the grass is so fun and easy. It really does look cool. I like how these have come together. Yeah, I do too. If you misshape your seed pod a little bit, just reshape it. Now, this one, I'm going to be tricky. I'm going to tuck it behind that one. Ah! You didn't think it was going to go there, did you? Sometimes you can get tricky. You can be like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do what you don't expect me to do. Paint the things you don't expect me to paint. Say the things you don't expect me to say. You don't know. You don't know people around me. I'm going to come back here and see how I just got to. I'm just like, if there's a place where I got a little out of shape, I just paint it back. You know, you guys are not. And, you know, I love that there's that paint with me live challenge that y'all have going. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the quiet people you don't see in chat, guys, because they're so busy painting, they can't chat. They just tell you later. Right? Yeah. <laughs> if they did it. I'm just making sure I've got a nice little seed pod here. <gasps> Look what happened there. What happened? So that some paint was dry and it got into my wet paint and it got glumped on my brush. And it could have glumped on my canvas. So I'm going to roll it off. I'm going to get some more different paint. That happens. Sometimes you get concentrating so much into what you're doing, you don't see what's happening on your brush, right? Yeah. Painting a little green over that, leaving some of the dark, and then I'll... Once I have that, I get to do the grass. Love. Now, the trick to the grass is taking a deep breath and being kind of in awe that you did this, <laughs> right? Oh. Be in awe. Feel really good. Feel really good that you did this. Just be like, oh, man, I'm really going. I'm going to get my brush wet. I'm not even going to rinse it out from the green I have because there's so many greens that I'm going to use and create. Some of them are going to be dark. Some of them are going to be light. So. I'll come here at the corner, and I'm going to, at this corner, 
notice how I'm curving to the right as I'm coming on the right side. I'm kind of curving to the left as I'm on the left side. That's going to continue a little bit at every corner, and then we'll get crazy in the mid stretches. Little bits of grass. Now, I don't got to paint out my poppy I love, so, you know, you put your grass where you want to. Nature might obscure your favorite poppy, but this is your painting. Now, see, I'm in the stretch, so I can brush this any way I want. I'm pressing hard, and then I'm releasing. And what's happening is the brush's filaments are making those little grass elements that seem like lots of little delicate ones. Or I can just use the tip of my brush and get little bits of grass. So it's either way. What's hard about grass is sometimes you guys want to mow it. Don't mow the grass. <laughs> right now, let's just put this first little line. Right, of grass around. Like I've, I'm letting that poppy peek out a little bit, but he's a little bit covered. Why do we do that? So that it looks like you're looking up. Yes, maybe your mouse size. Somebody said, well, where's the hole for the head? <laughs> <laughs> There's no hole. Didn't work out that way, guys. No hole. Just grab some more green. Here we go. Now, remember what we were doing with the corner? So we curve to the side that we're on. So look at it. here's this curve. But then as I come here, what do I do? I curve the opposite way, don't I? That's how you get the corners. That really helps the perspective that you've got going. You get crazy in the mid stretches. Think about it in the corners. And just on the tip of my brush, you can go right, 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 right. Whoa, no, left, 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 left. Feel brave. Grass goes a lot of different way. Curving right, curve right. Nope, left, 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 left. Grass, grass, curve right. <laughs> are we at another corner, guys? Get I think we corner. are. You've got to turn the corner. What do you get at the corners? You get thoughtful, right? I don't know. Do you? Yeah, you do. I get so I'm going to curve corners. my grass from this corner a little bit towards that right curve, right? And this corner I'm going to take back towards that left curve. That's how I turn my corner. That's how you don't paint yourself into a corner. Don't paint yourself into a corner, man. You paint yourself out of a corner. <laughs> now, if you know anything about fields of poppies, you know that poppies, much like dandelions, can be weeds. They're a hardy, wild flower. So there will be other plants often mixed in. And as we finish this round, we're going to come back and put some of that in and then the highlights, and then we are literally done. Let's just go. You loving it? How's our clouds? How's our time? How's our feeling about all of this? I think it looks really good. I want to thank everybody for just making the time to even be here to paint today. Take time for yourself. It is wonderful. Get a little more brown into that mix. I'm having a little trouble with coverage. If you're like, oh, I'm not getting any coverage, you can always come back with a little brown. See how I'm doing? My phthalo is a bit of a translucent color. So sometimes you got you to gotta make it stronger. It's looking good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> you got to love your painting. So we got to know the corners by now. Curving right, 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 right. Right, right, curve, left, 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 left. That's how we pretend that that's in perspective. I have a really fun one that I want to do with these legs going up a cherry tree, looking up at the sky with little jeans and shoes. Ah, makes me so happy. There we go. Maybe I come here. Remember, you can curve one way and then curve the other way, and that helps it look wild, doesn't it? Curving one way and then changing your mind. Now, obviously, we've got to have some plants. Some It's pretty awesome. You didn't even think it was going to be this cool, did you? <sighs> 
You could do this in a rainstorm. You could do this at a sunset. You could do this at your favorite time of day. It could be grass. It could be wheat. It could just be anything. We're going to do a bunch of these. I really love these. We're going to look down at stuff. We're going to look up at stuff. We're going to get a different perspective from our lives. We're going to get our wanderlust on. We're going to go far afield and far away from the busy hustle and bustle and our cell phones. This has been really, really awesome and relaxing. Has it? I needed this today. You know what? There's a lot of people who did. There's so many. We had so many folks here that, that came and joined us and were really just saying how much they've enjoyed the, the chat and being able to hang out here. And, you know, Vicky was just saying, I want to lay in this field and look up and just do this. So this, oh, is, yeah. this is a really emotionally satisfying painting, I think. Now, I'm going to add a, a couple weeds. Okay. So to do that, I'm just going to create some different types of foliage. I'm going to press in with my brush, and I'm going to just make this. Little stroke. See that? I'm just using the round. Look at that. What's that? Just something weird. Something different. I'm going to go right. I feel these two are too similar. So to fix that, I'm going to come here and I'm going to layer over the seed pod <laughs> that I don't love. Something else. You can do that. I'll get a little bright green. This is just me correcting something in my painting I felt like was just too similar. I'll make a shorter one over here. Look, small ones of different texture. Changing up that texture can be real helpful to also making this feel like it's a, it's a different kind of field, right? Yeah. You can do one in the corner. It's a different little plant. See you know how we're doing? Little plants. Here and there. Now, you did another one of these looking up a tree, didn't you? I did one looking up a tree. It's honestly, I want to redo it. It's, but it was, it was really neat too. Yeah, it was a tree in forced perspective. I really like those when we look up, when we lay down and we look up in our paintings. And I want to, there's another tree that I want to do with like these, these like denim, like feet. I'm going to keep going with this one. That one is going to make sense when I get the other grass. <laughs> but see how we're just changing up some of the textures here? Like there might be weeds. Look at this one. I'm going to go dash, 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 dash. So we have structured leaves, loose leaves. We've got some variants. Last layer. Get your yellow and your green. Last layer already? Yeah, we're, we're all done. Oh, man. Get your green into your yellow. You can see I'm dipping and swirling. Dip and swirl. Not so much the bend and snap, but, you know. Dip and swirl and dip and swirl. <laughs> we can't all be Reese Witherspoon. Okay, so I'm rolling off to get the paint offloaded from my brush. Wipe. I'm going to reload on just the tip. I may even touch a couple of these little weeds that I made to give them some interesting thing. And then I'm going to come add another little layer of the grass. Not everywhere. See how it's just a bit? Uh-huh. Just here and there. Add, you know, a little bit of highlight to something if it needed it. Take some of this up higher. Like maybe there's some that's here on the tip of this grass. Oh, yeah. And add a little highlight to that seed pod if you want in. Oh, those highlights really make, a, I'm zooming in on them, and you can make those make such a difference. They do. Those little highlights are a big deal. They're a big deal. Little highlights are a big deal. So on these little plants here, I could come on the side towards the sun and make a little highlight. Uh-huh. I'm digging those highlights, man. Highlight little things here and there. I can highlight some of the grass. Not all the grass, oh. just some of the grass. That's what we're doing. Not all the grass, some of the grass. I kind of do follow the grass patterns that I have, but I try to get, make it seem like different little bits of light have hit them and are peeking out. This is me getting in that paint and swirl, swirl, swirl on the tip of the brush. Pop some highlights on these seed pods. And give this little fellow some highlights, right? Just at the tip there. And now I'm going to come here and Maybe highlight just this side of the grass and 
This little bit can go in front of that poppy. Look how we layered there. A little bit, layer, layer, layer. There they are, layer, layer, layer. Now here, I'll even layer this guy behind some grass, look. So he makes a little more sense. So I've gotten rid of the seed pot I wasn't loving. Yeah. Right? And added a feature so it becomes like a good thing. Doesn't have to be a negative. Things can all be fun. Highlight. 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 I'm just picking the side. If you're wondering how I'm doing this, I'm just picking the side that is close to the sun. Highlight. Highlight. Do the sound effects help? Yes, my friends, they do. I don't even remember where it started from. <laughs> I think I gotta turn it over. It's so hard to remember, like, where did I originally orient from? Where's my focus? There it is. Depends on which way you lay. You know, right? and whether you're on the northern or, he or southern hemisphere. You know, because... Actually, I don't think that really matters. I'm just... I think it's probably not for this, but I love the idea of it. I'm going to go ahead and get some of this white green that I've got over here. Get the yellow white into it. Get a little white into it. I'm going to sign over here in the corner. Clearly, all our Australian friends have to flip this upside down. <laughs> we won't forget the Kiwis either. All right, high fives out in the island. All right. Now... Fun things that you could do. You could do birds flying across. You could do a dragonfly from underneath going overhead. This is really spectacular on a ceiling of a kid's room. You could do a plane, kite, whatever's in your sky, your sky, whatever your view needs to be so you can reset into your day. I really get love this time that I get to spend with you guys. Um, I really appreciate everybody and everybody's time. I want to remind you to be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.